Hi, my name is Sarish Sudhakaran and in this video, we'll analyze the cinematography of the late Harris Savides. Harris Savides first had a rock star career as a cinematographer for commercials and music videos. He shot for the best of the best, won numerous awards, and was highly sought after. It was no surprise when David Fincher finally asked him to helm the game, which catapulted him into popular conscience as a cinematographer to watch out for. And until his untimely death at the young age of 55, he was always striving to push the boundaries of cinematography as art. Looking back at his body of work, it is clear the adulation we shower on him is fully deserved. I hope this video highlights his important contributions to the furthering of cinematography and provides you a starting place to learn more about his work. Harris Savidi's style must be understood in two parts. It started off flashy because that was the demand placed on his job when music videos were still respected and were tentpole events by themselves. He had to keep delivering the best imagery the world had ever seen. Glamorous, avant-garde, edgy, whatever you want to call it. Music videos didn't have the help of visual effects in those days, so it had to stand out in production design and cinematography. You were either at the top of your game or you weren't in the game. When it came to film cinematography, his style changed, like a flick of a switch, to a naturalistic dreamlike look based in reality. He believed a film must have one style or one look. He hated making images beautiful for its own sake. It didn't interest him at all. He was more interested in simplifying his lighting and compositions to the absolute necessities of the script and performance. Anything extra was superfluous. The most famous of his techniques is lighting the set rather than lighting the actors. Once the set was lit, the actors were shot as is, as they moved through it, with only minor enhancements with lighting or negative fill. He reasoned that people don't have key lights following them everywhere, and this defined his aesthetic. The next well-known Savidi's fingerprint is serious underexposure. In many movies, he even surpassed Gordon Willis in skating off the bleeding edge. He called it the toenail of the film curve. He regularly underexposed by around one and a half stops and sometimes even two to four stops. He used a combination of techniques. Sometimes he underexposed directly in camera, other times he used a combination of camera and film processing techniques. He liked to shoot a low contrast image to begin with so he had maximum control over contrast and processing. He learned early on that real life hardly had any true blacks and he strived to achieve a lot of subtlety in the tonality of the shadows. Many of his underexposed shots are mistaken for silhouettes, though there's detail there driving the story. He regularly used older lenses that didn't have lens coatings that suppress flare. This helped in lowering the contrast of the image, as well as taking the edge off sharpness to give the image a soft, creamy look. He was always after this, and tried to not get the whites blown out so he could retain as much information in the shoulder of the curve. This he could do with the underexposure strategy he employed, and he metered for the highlights and set his exposure around that. This means his meter was often off the charts, so those who weren't accustomed to his command of the medium were horrified, but they were always surprised by the results. He mostly strived to light to a T2 or T2.8 so he could use the softest regions of a lens, as well as get a shallow depth of field that added to the dreamlike but naturalistic state he worked hard to create. He also used filters occasionally to further break down the image, though only as an exception. He tested rigorously and even famously baked his film stock in an oven to manipulate its response. This kind of commitment to the image is a skill that is nowadays shared with the colorist and visual effects artist. Harris Savides could push those boundaries because he owned the image. Today, if you try something unique, everyone else can see it on the monitor, and then the committee takes over. If you don't have any insecurities yet, they will be born in the video village. When it comes to lighting, he was a tungsten man, and even shot tungsten stock on exteriors. He carefully maintained a correct white balance. Even when shooting nights, he tried to keep his blacks neutral, and hated blue nights. He typically tended to desaturate his colors, in subtle ways though, always trying not to overdo it. On interiors, he lit the room as if there was a single soft source, primarily by bouncing light off muslin. He also used muzz balls, which are Chinese lanterns with muslin instead of paper, 
to fill in the faces and eyes. Most of his lighting is from the top, with the occasional side lighting as well. He had the propensity sometimes to have a side rim light in his earlier work. The contrast ratio was always high, and most times his backgrounds were a stop or two under key. You could understand how by stripping away all the excesses of cinematography, he was placing the story at the forefront of his craft. And without this mindset, the movies he shot would have lost a lot of that magic we now take for granted. I hope this brief video makes you curious enough to learn more about the brilliant cinematography of Harris Savides. The best way to learn more about him is to watch his movies and to read his interviews in the American Cinematographer magazine and elsewhere. The work he has accomplished in his lifetime is more than enough to earn him a place amongst the greats. And that says it all. If there's a favorite cinematographer whose work you want analyzed, let me know. To see more videos like this one, please subscribe. There are lots more on the way. Bye now.